Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is me, a true and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2. Well, last time we had a bit of a fun holiday up in Scotland, because I was not willing to accept England's imposition of a puppet king up in Scotland. Oh no, the only puppet king up in Scotland shall be my puppet king, who we had to go and set up and then go and rescue because he immediately got attacked by his own dukes. But, things seem to be okay now. If we go over to King Colin II... And then we have a quick look -see at his vassals right here. Okay, fine. The Duke of Moray doesn't like him. Fair enough. We did just go to war against Moray. Everyone else seems broadly okay with him. And he's, yeah, slowly rebuilding his own forces. Once he gets his own personal domain back up to a thousand men, he's got the other vassals. He should be able to keep Scotland under control for the time being. Unfortunately, right now the plan's not going to work desperately well because, yeah, it's actually going to move away from him if he dies because he doesn't have any children to pass on the title to. But he just needs to get on with having some children, all right? He's 24. His wife is 21. Everything's going to be absolutely okay. They just need to start having some children who don't bloody die. We also had a rather fun time looking at England at the end of last time because, yes, things have gone a bit... um. A bit weird in England. I've been looking at this. I think I've figured out what's actually going on here. So, let's consider the current situation in England. So, the last king, of course, was the guy we've been dealing with for some time. The husband of, well, not my daughter, John's daughter, Orange. So, he eventually died in his bed in April of 1144. Except you may notice the fun fact, he doesn't have the Kingdom of England next to his portrait. He didn't die as the King of England. He died as the King of Jerusalem. The reason is, he was basically rendered, yeah, completely incapable, incapacitated effectively, earlier than April 1144. That was indeed where he eventually died, but that wasn't when he was dethroned. So if we go over to the history tab of the Kingdom of England, we can see exactly what happens, which is, uh, two months before he died, in February, King Cedric was installed as the King of England by faction demand. So basically, the Count said, uh-oh, the King's completely incapacitated and isn't actually capable of doing anything. He's, like, slipped into a coma or something. So uh, as a result of that, instead, uh, King Cedric, from the exact same house, the House of Wessex, gets to be King instead. Which is where this rather odd thing with the Kingdom of Jerusalem occurred. Because, sure, the King of England, who of course held the two kingdoms, he was both the King of England and the King of Jerusalem, King of England being his primary title, the Dukes of England said, no, 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 you can't be King of England anymore, alright, we need someone who's not in a coma. But apparently, the Council of Jerusalem, a bunch of, like, little vassals and personal friends, didn't feel that he was incapable of running Jerusalem. So as a result, nobody actually kicked him out of... Jerusalem, and he just kept being the king. Except, of course, Jerusalem as an actual kingdom, he didn't own any of that, so there was no land down here he could just move down to and rule. So instead, the two bits of personal domain that the King of England, or former King of England, held, Middlesex and Bedford, one of them just got assigned to him as the King of Jerusalem. So as a result, we ended up with this rather odd Holy City of Bedford situation. And when he did pass on, just two months later, that went over to his son, because Jerusalem had primogeniture laws as well. So as a result, this guy is now just sitting in Bedford as the King of Jerusalem, except England has immediately attacked, because, yeah, he actually had claims on Bedford, because he was running Bedford not long ago. So he's going to be kicked out pretty darn soon. So... This new guy, Cedric, who right now has, yeah, just a domain of one, but he will momentarily be able to boost that up to two because he'll take Bedford back into his personal domain. What exactly is your deal? Where did you come from? Ah, you are actually the brother of this guy. Fine, so you're the brother of this guy and the son of Edgar the Just. So, you've got a very good claim. I can see why the council would put you in his place. You're decent, if not spectacular, in terms of your attributes, and uh, yeah, you've got a very good claim to be King of England. And he has, of course, immediately pushed his very strong claim on the Kingdom of Jerusalem too, so yeah, that'll be wrapped up in no time at all. Now, as for this new king, what else can we find out about him? So he's strong, so in the event he decides to lead his armies personally, he'll actually be quite effective in combat. Deceitful, cynical, diligent, craven. Now, that one's interesting. So his marshal's not exactly spectacular. No, good stuff. Gregarious and wrath. All right. So he's not spectacular, all things considered. And as a result of that, yeah, right now, the levies he can call up are about 
1,000 personally, so that's obviously from Middlesex, and then about, well, 4,000, but it'll go up towards 9,000 from his vassals. Interesting. So right now, England's not in great shape. That's... That's worth having a think about. That's very worth having a think about. But just for the moment, I want to turn my attention to uh, Ireland. Because if I ever want to take out England, I'm going to need uh, friends to do it. Now, I'm already in the process of building an alliance with the next King of France. I feel like the next King of France, me and him might actually be uh, good friends. Uh, I can actually ask the current King of France for an alliance but he would say no uh, due to political concerns and base reluctance. In theory, I could just send my Chancellor over there, actually sweet talk him a bit, toss him some money, just get him to like me more. He might actually be willing to go in for it. But I think we can wait. I think we can wait because potentially when my daughter marries his son and they become the new King Queen of France, that might be the better time to move. Because, yeah, this guy's 69. He won't necessarily be around for too much longer. Let's sort it out when the next king comes in. We can figure that out then. Ireland is interesting to me. So I've potentially got a puppet king I might be able to use to bring Scotland into the fold in a couple of generations up in Scotland. As for Ireland, I wouldn't mind moving over there. Because I've just been looking over Ireland and I can't help but notice this territory right down here at the south that's all on its own... Has actually got some good investment going on here. 1,200 as a total levy. Yeah, some decent investment. So if we kind of look at the next territory up, for example, it's way less developed. It can't produce anywhere near as many troops. So if I could just move down here, this would be a good foothold to potentially attack these two territories. And then I could hold the Duchy of Mumu. <laughs> Which has got a great name. Absolutely adore that name. But uh, there it is. Mumu. The uh, Duchy of Mumu. Rather the petty kingdom of Mumu. Because it's just it's just a duchy. It's fine. It's the Duchy of Mumu. So we could move over there. Take that. And have a foothold down here in Ireland. And then just slowly expand north. Potentially of course. Scotland might wish to consider its expansion as well. They might actually want to take over the rest of Ulster up north. Because if they do that. Then... Me controlling the southern bit of Ireland, Scotland controlling the northern bit, and then we just band together and move against England, potentially with France's assistance. We could destroy England. Alright, we could start splitting them up into lots of little petty states. Now that, that is what I want to see. Now we do also rather conveniently have, yeah, a claimant to this territory who's willing to move into my space and isn't currently married. How old are you? 35. That's a little bit old, to be honest, because I'd need to get child out of you. Because, yeah, that claim can actually be inherited. Or I could just basically get you into my court, marry you to one of mine, then just basically immediately support your claim, get over there and just set you up. So basically, just once again, set my own little kind of baby puppet leader down there. But then again, unlike the King of Scotland, because of course there is a King of Scotland, there's no King of Ireland, so she would just control this bit. And whether she and her husband would ever actually expand north is up to them, I can't control that. It's probably best I go and do this directly. So, all right, let's get the council up and around here. You guys need to start helping out. So, stop state crafting. Instead, fabricate a claim over here, if you'd be so kind. That'd be just flipping lovely. As for everyone else, oh yeah, everyone's in kind of the wrong position and doing the wrong job right now. Right, Drew, guess what you're doing? That's right, it's going straight back to Constantinople. Sulfur is training troops and Connor is right now overseeing construction. You can keep doing that. I quite like that, but do it in Cornwall, please, because we can almost certainly do some more building over here. Spend 400 gold on, oh yeah, big pile of heavy infantry and pikemen. Get on with that. So that is going to be done nice and quickly with your assistance. You just crack on there. That's my retinue who's currently in the process of coming home. Okay. Things looking good. And I think, how long is it till I can attack this territory, De Ure, without actually breaking the pact I've got here? Uh, why doesn't that show up for you? It shows up for me. I'm not sure why that doesn't show up for you. Uh, so I've got... Wait, what? I totally have a pact with that guy. What do you want about? Yes, there we are. Truce. Uh, so that ends in August 1146. So I've got some time before I can actually enforce my De Ure claim on those guys and wrap up the entire Kingdom of Brittany. And actually bring that under my banner. So I had an idea. So England, as I just said, 
they're not in their best shape right now. They've just had a little bit of, uh, you know, moving around. There's troops all over the place. They're trying to take Jerusalem, the holy city of Bedford. They've just changed the king. The amount of troops is less than it used to be because the martial score of the new guy isn't exactly that spectacular. He's 52 already. The vassals don't have much in the way of troops available. If there was a time to attack England, now might be it. And I think I know exactly the right flipping spots. You see, I've got De Ure claims against the three border territories that rightfully ought to belong to the Kingdom of Wales. So I can basically just declare war on these guys any time I want. But there's one in particular that I think is rather interesting. Let's just quickly go over here to the terrain map. We don't use this very often because Gwent is interesting. So number one, Gwent is actually hilly. So military information in the tooltip there. If combat takes place here, defender will get a defensive bonus. All right, let's also just quickly have a look to see at the river situation. A river flows between this county and Hereford, Gloucester, and Powys. That's Hereford there, Gloucester there, and Powys there. That was the wrong way round. That's Gloucester, that's Hereford, that's Powys. But, basically, it doesn't matter what angle you approach Gwent from, short of literally marching all the way through Wales, uh, you have to cross a river. And if you cross a river, and you attack over a river into a defender on the other side of the river, the defender gets an advantage. So, if I basically just can mobilise all my troops, and throw them at Gwent fast enough, I think, even if England does manage to muster literally everything... They won't be able to actually stop this. Even if it does take me a little bit of time to get my troops over from Brittany. Admittedly, it is a bit of a risk. I'm going to be, yeah, knackering my relationship with both the Duke of Mercia and actually England himself. And by the way, the reason it's a little bit more dangerous than it looks like is because this will be Mercia's land. So I assume the Duke of Mercia will raise his own troops as well. So there could be an extra 6,000 coming at me. It could be 11,000 odd total. But it probably won't be a coordinated strike. And if I'm attacking Gwent, the single most important thing will be who actually holds Gwent. That's what the war score is determined by ultimately. Sure, they can do a bit to the war score by coming down here and attacking my capitals. But if I take all of Gwent and the war's about Gwent, ultimately I should be able to win it in the long run. And if there's one spot where an army of about 8,500 could beat potentially and hopefully multiple waves of about 11,000, Gwent is the spot. Especially if I set up my commanders correctly, because my plan will be to defend and do nothing else. And honestly, now is the time to do it. Every week I wait at this point, the vassals of the King of England get stronger, this becomes less and less feasible. So we are going to dive in with some flipping action today, ladies and gentlemen. Let's find the right claim here. Uh, where is the claim I want? There we go. De Ure claim on Gwent. Lovely. And everyone's willing to vote for that. Marvellous. And we are now at war with England for... Is this the first time we've actually been at war with England? It might be, you know, so I really hope we're ready for this. So technically I'm just at war with King Cedric of England. The real question I'm now wondering is, will the Duke of Mercia actually join the war formally and thus raise his uh, personal levies to take care of this? Because this is part of his territory, but not his directly controlled territory. That's a bit more over here. This technically just belongs to one of his vassals. Will he bother to raise his personal levies to deal with this? I don't know, but it's time for me to raise literally everything I've got and... I really should not have just spent that money on... Oh, oh, this is going to be... Right, this is going to be interesting. I should not have just spent literally all of the money and then declared war. Right, I might need to take out a small loan. <laughs> small loan. Very small loan. Right, uh, oh, this is going to be all fun and games right here. Okay, raise my personal levies. That is a lot of flipping troops right there and march them straight to Gwent as quick as we can. You guys get over here and meet up in Leon. All of you guys get over here. In fact, actually, no, before we do any of that, also raise everything else too. We need literally everything we've got. The vassal levies are coming along as well. Everything is heading to Gwent. 
So, the first stage of this war is this force needs to basically head to Gwent just as quickly as it can and just hold off against whatever it is the English can throw together immediately. But it will take time for England to draw its forces together because for me, Gwent is just right flipping there. For the English, well, they're all over the flipping shop. It's going to take them time to mobilise. And once we've drawn the army together, then we'll set up the commanders. So... <laughs> Let's get time ticking along here, but slow down time. Also, we're literally doing this on Christmas Day. <laughs> this was the Christmas invasion right here. Uh, so, there's a handful of troops. That'll presumably be a raised vassal force right there. And my troops just keep on moving nice and fast. There's 3,000. 3,500. I've probably got the troops here. Yeah, there's another 3,000 waiting right here. What this is going to be, ultimately, is... About 4,000 men. So I need the boats to ship 4,000 men over. And this is... Oh. Yeah, I really might need to take out that loan. Especially once I get the boats operational. In fact, just for safety. Screw it. We'll be able to repay the loan pretty quickly. This is just the safest thing to do. Well, the safest thing to do would have been not to invest in the military infrastructure just before the war. Okay. I need to borrow some money. Borrow some money from the from the Templars. Why aren't you guys willing to actually give me the money? Ah, the Templars don't have any money. That would indeed make sense. Yes. Fine. So just borrow this money right here. There we go. Now I've got money. <laughs> really, really should have done, you know, all of that before the war began, but whatever. Uh, right. Just give them another moment to gather the troops together and then we'll get them in boats and we'll ship them straight over to Gwent. All right, but keep a really close eye on this guy. This guy is moving to Bedford. Good. Because remember, they've got more than one war on right now. And, uh, ah, my son. My son has actually become a decent fortune builder. So he actually got a level three economic education. That's good because that's fertility up. I like that one. Right. Prince Achilleus, impress me. Do you deserve the epithet godlike? Well, you've got an excellent beard. That is certainly true. Right, good beard. What do we know about you? Not great at diplomacy. Decent enough at martial. Good at stewardship. Not great at intrigue and not so clever. Fortune builder, gay, cynical, wrathful, ambitious, chaste and shy. Yeah, in all fairness, for someone who's ambitious... To have those stats is a tiny bit on the underwhelming side. A tiny bit underwhelming. And bear in mind, he also doesn't like me very much. But his intrigue's not that high. So uh, hopefully he won't be able to do anything too flipping stupid. Fine, we'll leave him for the time being. But we should probably get him a wife at some point. In fact, actually, he's the son of a king. So is the game going to just kind of be slightly ridiculous and decide therefore he deserves all the best princesses in the world? Well, we certainly have a few princesses showing up immediately, so that's not bad at all. In fact, actually, Norway. We got ourselves a princess of Norway right here. Fine, she's not great, but non-aggression pact with the Norwegians. Ah, when I say non-aggression pact with the Norwegians, the Norwegians have got a bit of trouble right now. They've got a fairly major revolt going on. Right, well, who's likely to win that one? Uh, okay, how's the war going, my good man? So, Gamble of the Norwegian Revolt versus the King of Norway. So, right now he's winning, but let's have a little Luxy here. So, no, no, no. Gamble himself. Gamble can get about 2,000 men on the field at the moment. And with a little bit of time, maybe a tiny bit more, but not much more. All right. What about the current King of Norway? He can field more. I feel like he can put down that revolt. Right. Leave the Norwegians alone, but if he does happen to win... That might be worth considering, that Norwegian princess, yes. Other than that, nothing major. So, to be honest, I think we're just gonna leave this guy be just for the minute. We'll get him married later. Let's just stay focused on the war for a second. Uh, these troops momentarily will be... Ah, grooming there has also been completed. Congratulations. Uh, so I assume that means you actually need yourself a new ambition. There's no valid ambition for you to pick. Oh, He's only 14, he's already done literally everything. Marvellous. And I've got unlanded sons, which is really not that important for me. But I might well give him some land. No, I must not give him any land because he hates me. Alright, sadly he needs to be kept powerless, because otherwise he might use all of it against me. 
Right, this movement here, you, a good, decent amount of troops, are about to arrive in Gwent, as are all of you bastards. Good. So we're up to... Yeah, it's going to be about 5,000 men already attacking Gwent. Excellent. And these troops are already almost there as well. For the moment at least, the English are not so concerned about this war. They're worrying about the Jerusalem War as a priority. So, next up, let's just merge all these armies together and get one single force going on here, because I've got a plan. You see, good old Sulfa actually happens to be a defender. Defense plus 25%, and that's my plan. My plan is to just stand in Gwent on top of a hill, shooting anyone who tries to cross a river. So defense is the priority. So Sulfa is going right in the middle. Meanwhile, of course, on the flanks, we can have our special flankers. So we've already got one flanker on one side, and I swear we've got someone else who's uh, good at flanking. Or, or if not, we've got... Ah, yes, of course, Beltram. Beltram is a hunter who gets plus 20 on pursuit. So once he wins his flank, he will actually be in good shape. So this is, I would say, a pretty well set up army to stand on this hill and stop anyone from actually pushing their way through. We've got a strong defender guarding the middle. And once the flanks win, we have got skilled flankers to do the pursuit. Because once the pursuit begins, we will be able to kill a lot of flipping people. Now, in just two days... Uh, You'll join up with that. Good. All of you guys merge together. So, 3,800 people. We need enough boats to ship them around. So, raise the local levies. I believe we've actually got excellent ship levies locally already. So, that's 16. That is 1,600. Right, we're going to need just a tiny bit more. That should be plenty. So, you guys, just everyone head over here. Let's just quickly merge the boats together. Now, any sign of England? No, that is the Bast Army of Jerusalem. And uh, Master Iliad. Uh, could you please capitalise Master? Otherwise, it looks very, very odd indeed. My brother, I have a proposal which might interest you. An old letter detailing the possible locations of some lost... Ooh. All right. I think that's reasonable. We'll go and find that text. So, these three, merge them together. That should have plenty of capacity. And speaking of those, as we just crack on with the war at the same time, so we've got, yeah, I think we've run into this event before, I'll bet this is a variant of it. So basically I've got a choice of three different texts I can go and get, which have different costs and different probabilities of success. The middle option seems like a good one, so we're going to go and check out Leon, we'll hopefully find a scroll there. 81% chance of a successful search, and that will be 200 knowledge. That probably is useful. Right. That should now be literally all of them. Yes, that's now enough troops for you guys to go and actually pick up these troops. Any sign of England yet? Not yet. Right. Everyone on board the ships, please. That is now enough of that. And you can go and deliver these troops. You should be able to deliver those personally, right? For some reason, it's saying there's no valid path to the province. Is that because technically I don't own the harbour? It's probably because I don't own the harbour. Fine. In that case, just head over here, drop them off in the neighbouring province, and we'll just walk them over. So, right now... Yeah. Actually, England's been kind of stupid, because they've given me enough time to pull together all of my forces. So now, you get over here, merge into that. Uh, you guys can then just basically be disbanded. No special events, so I don't lose any boats. And we have got ourselves a very, very big volume of troops. How long till you move? 24th, fine. There you go. Uh, merge the armies and... Okay, seriously, not that guy. Sulfur, all right? Sulfur, we want sulfur at the center. Now, the problem we've got here is, yeah, right now, I don't see where the English are. How are we doing in this war, by the way? We're doing fine. We're doing fine so far. We're just slowly sieging them down. I'm mostly happy to just leave England be for the time being. No rush here. I'd say this is just fine. Also, speaking of Moo Moo and Ireland, hello, who's attacking who right now? Ah, right. So you guys are attacking each other. Well, that works for me because that means uh, you're going to actually just be weakening each other. And who's actually winning that? So right now, yeah, the guy in the south is actually doing well. Good. Good, good, good. He might actually unify Moo Moo and his territory for me. Then I can just go and take the whole lot off him. That would certainly work, yes. So now the only question is, what, if anything, is England going to respond with? 
at the end of the day. And I don't want to risk a direct assault because uh, I would lose men. I don't have the men to lose right now. I should probably actually call back my... Yeah, you know what? It probably wouldn't be a terrible idea to call back my spy master. Also, uh, it does rather feel like there is actually disease spreading right now. Wasn't that... Yeah, consumption, which is apparently tuberculosis. And because this area is so, yeah, prosperous, it's it's spreading fast. Spreading very, very fast indeed. Right, so we're up to... Oh. That was only 7%. Right, I thought that was going to be um worth a fair bit more, actually. I thought that was going to be worth quite a bit more than 7% because this is the territory we're actually uh, fighting over. Ooh, also, we've got ourselves prosperity. I think we're already maxed out prosperity, so not that actually helps. But just, just build the building faster, it's fine. So this guy's just wandering around. And the bribery off of the priest of Leon was enough to make him unlock the inner chambers of the church. Marvellous. And uh, we found a hidden chamber. And we have found it. Neophyte insult. Hooray for me. We had, oh, we had a nice adventure. Well, I'm glad you had a lovely day out, insult. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to call my spy master back over here. And that is purely because I want to gain visibility of England. So I know you might not necessarily learn much from being in this part of the world. But I would like to know what's going on exactly. And also... Uh-oh. Hello. Why Why did that just go down there? Did they just launch a raid on me? Well, if they did, it hasn't told me about it. So this is uh, mildly concerning because that number definitely just went down. Uh, also, a daughter has been born to power the unfaithful and Connor O. Oh. oh dear, Connor. Have you got yourself an unfaithful wife? Oh dear, adulteress. Oh dear. Well, that's a shame. And the child has not been recognised, they are officially a bastard, and instead they just have their own special crest, which is just a bad picture of a duck. Marvellous. So, here's something I am rather glad about. So far we've not seen any sign whatsoever that Mercia themselves want to get involved in this. They're just basically sending the bare minimum they need to help out England itself with the Jerusalem War. There's been no sign of 11,000 troops, just the 5,000 that England itself has. And that, that is good news. Also, we've got more flipping bastards here. Dear, oh dear. Right, who's bastard this technically? Well, I'm going to guess it's actually, wait, Strong Lass and, wait, hang on. Strong Lass? No, 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 why are you... How are you related to her? Because you're related to her somehow. Cousins. Cousins by blood. Well, actually, kind of not. Like, wait, what's the right term for that? Because uh, technically, it's not his uncle's child. It's his grandfather's brother's granddaughter. Is that like great niece? Great, no, great, no, second cousin? I've no idea what that's called, but it's still a bit too close for comfort. Please stop having sex with her. You know what? This is kind of my fault. Strong Lass does actually want to get married, so she's keen on this sort of thing. And she actually, she's strong. We should just get her married into my own dynasty to see if we can just produce something decent. Right, okay, I get the picture. It's fine. Except weirdly, the King of Denmark shows up as an option. Right, the King of Denmark would... Okay. Well, this is interesting. No, I don't want to actually marry the King of Denmark with you, but it's interesting that that showed up as an option at all. That's that's very interesting. Right. We might need to look at that, because apparently the King of Denmark is currently unmarried. You know what? This'll do. We've got a kid coming through who's attractive. Let's get attractive and strong into the same bloodline and just see what happens. He's going to come of age in about two years, so uh, yeah, that'll be fine. You'll still be 21. You won't be getting on too much as a result of that. Let's just basically get you two married. Oh, but unless you won't. Ah, we need to make sure matrilineal will be accepted first, of course. And that creates the problem that basically no one outside the dynasty wants any of that. I'll tell you what, that Italian prince who came over to be steward, he had a son who's actually pretty decent. So, go on, you two just marry matrilineally so she can just start producing some children of her own. Job done. And the child's name shall be Mistake. Marvellous. And this is looking promising, actually. If we look down at the war score here, it's actually starting to tick up nice and fast. It just ticked up like 3% in no time at all there. 35% already. And we've actually managed to... Oh! Alright, so that's 35% and we've actually got all of this. Now, 
here's where things start getting a little bit on the uh, interesting side. Which is, what if we were to go over and basically punch England in the face? How's Bedford doing right now? Okay, they're just basically taking their time, slowly taking out Bedford. It's going to take them a little while to do. If I was to go and take out Bedford, Bedford is... Hang on, any information? No, no particular military information we need to be aware of. But there's also a river between Oxford and Northampton. So I'd need to approach from the south. I'd need to walk to Middlesex and then march north. At that point, I could basically take on the King of England's 5,000 troops with my 8,000 on a fair battlefield. Now, I might need to do that to actually settle this up. That, or just, well, actually, without a major battle, things get stuck at 99% for bloody ages. This is probably the best time I'm going to actually have to attack the King of England. Do I want to make it a bit more of a sure thing, however, by tossing in some extra mercenaries, like 8,000 to 5,000, and also... Let's just see what you've got here, my good man. So you, my good man, who I assume therefore are technically leading, Marshal of Nine, and no particularly special perks. Crusader's not bad, personal combat skill. And consumption. Ooh, you're actually sick. Well, this could potentially be of interest. Yeah, this could potentially be of great interest. Okay. How much for some mercenaries just to absolutely make sure of this? Because there's a lot of really cheap mercenaries now, because loads of other factions around the world have set up their own mercenary companies. So uh, there's loads of super cheap guys. And right now, how much am I making? I'm making plus two a month. So uh, I'm okay with all my forces raised. I could definitely afford to have just a, a handful for safety. And this would just be an extra, yeah, 700 light infantry, 200 archers. Just basically an extra 1,000 men. Ah, those guys are already under commission, unfortunately. Okay, but this one doesn't seem too bad. Some light cav... Oh, that's, that's a really small number. But it does come with cavalry and pikemen and heavy infantry, who do hit pretty hard. Or I could go for... Actually, that one doesn't seem great either. That one doesn't seem great at all. Dear, oh dear. Well, I can see why people are going for the cheap lads, yes. Lots of mercenary companies already been taken, and then we're going into the more traditional ones up here. So yeah, these ones down here are the amateur ones put together by other actual realms. You know what? An extra 300 heavy infantry, together with a whole bunch of extra cavalry. Screw it. Let's get it done. I know this is only 800 guys, but they feel like they're good guys. So, you come round here, join up with these lads, and then... We're marching on flipping London. We are going to go and kick the ass of the King of England. It's going to be beautiful. There's another 600. Oh. Hello. You're going to Wiltshire, are you? Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Where are you going? You're going to Somerset. Right. I think they're coming to me at this point. If they're coming to me, you guys need to get the hell out of Dodge immediately. Uh, 13 galleys holds 1,300. Good. You guys, embark, please. Uh, and just stay on the ocean until I give you permission to come ashore. In fact, actually, screw it. I'll just move you around the outside and you can meet up with those guys there. I think these guys are now marching down to meet us. So let's bring my mercenaries around the outside. Just so I can basically reinforce. And then they're... Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right, you. Get in there. What is all of this all of a sudden? Have the forces of Mercia decided to jump in on this? Because I think they might have done. In which case, I might want to try and take these guys out before they actually properly unify. So, first things first, let's just get this. And also, okay, not the most important thing right now, but clearly I need to spend some time with Helen. Great, she likes me slightly more. That's completely inconsequential. Okay, you guys getting over here. So just stop time there, merge again. Okay, we're no longer purely on the defensive. So, okay, when I merge, it just changes all the commanders around, which can be very annoying indeed. So Sulfur probably doesn't want to actually be on the front anymore because we're no longer defending. Now we're going on the attack. So now, who would be a good person to have on the front? We've got a couple of people who are good for morale. Light foot leader. How many light foot troops you have there? Admittedly, only 800. It's not exactly spectacular. Direct leader, leading the center plus 20%. Okay, that's not that bad at all, to be honest. Flat terrain expert. Well, we might actually end up fighting on flat terrain because we're going into England. So, 
Go on then. The bishop is now leading. So, we've got ourselves 8,000 troops right there. And a whole bunch of troops just floating around. Now, perfect world. You guys are going up to Shropshire. Is there anything else you're doing? Let's just make sure there's nothing we don't know about. There. Oh. They are doing something else. They're attempting to revoke Leicester. Right. Together with defending against Iliad the Hunter. But, for the most part, I think they're focusing on the Leicester business. So, basically, this guy just wants a little bit more strength. Leicester is... What's your deal right now? Ah, you're officially actually now reporting directly to King Cedric until such time as Mercia puts you in your place. Okay. Probably the best thing we can do immediately is that's an army of England. There's another thousand men coming in. Let's get down over here and basically just take on England. Before such time as the actual reinforcements... Oh, we're going to be too late for that, aren't we? The reinforcements are coming in. Can we actually catch them before they make it? We might be able to. And also there's bandits or something, something, something. Right, where are you going? You're trying to get into Dorset. Do I want to snipe these guys off first if you're going into Dorset? Because otherwise you will join the battle. It's probably best just to get over here and just start smashing these guys. I'm up to 9,000 guys here. Okay. 5,000 versus 9,000. He's going to get into Dorset in just one day. Yeah, you know what? It's going to be difficult to... To catch him. Actually, you know We'll give it a go. We'll see if we can catch him. So, change the order to Dorset and see what he does. He's trying to move to Devon right now on the 19th. And I don't care. Uh, 19th. I'm going to move on the 8th. Right, so we are going to catch this guy. Right, so basically we can just destroy him. And that's going to chase away a thousand men who otherwise would have got involved in this battle. Good. And that guy decided to go ahead and use a claim. I don't care so much. So that guy's now been taken care of. Good. Barracks have been built in Cornwall. Marvellous, I suppose. Now, do I want to go and take out these guys, or do I now want to attack this? So far, he's... No, he's not managed to make it past the defenders. He's not even close. So I could pick off some more forces of England. Another 600 reinforcements coming in. And... 13 galleys there. Not sure what you're doing exactly. Now is probably the time to launch the full assault against England. So there's another 170 coming in, but those guys are some way off. And they're coming to Somerset, but it's going to take them a while. So, in we go. Actually, do I want to do that? Well, it's a bit late now. So how are we doing? Looks to me like England's being pretty well torn apart, actually. They are losing troops very, very fast indeed. I'm losing troops as well, but the centre's actually going to collapse first. This is not doing so bad. There go the flanks. Oh, yeah. This was, as it turns out, an absolute flipping slaughter. And the army of England has been crushed by the army of Cornwall. Good flipping stuff there. Now, why have you just said there's an open council position? Who just died? Uh, but any chance was it? Oh, dear. Why do I get the feeling that somebody is... Wait, hang on. What happened to... What happened to Drew? Where's Drew? Why is Drew no longer the... Okay. Drew is incapable. Oh dear, what happened to poor old Drew? Ah, Drew is currently bedridden with consumption. So I'm guessing she caught that down over here. Have you guys got consumption going on? Uh, no you don't. She just sort of caught it from somewhere. Right, well, that's fair enough. As she's currently bedridden, we probably should change that over. Who else fancies being spymaster for a day? Ooh, Priam! You could potentially be spy master. You're actually pretty good at that sort of thing. Or the Prince of Italy, but probably I don't want a foreigner doing that. It feels like the sort of thing you, you keep within the family. The people who really, really flipping like you. So Priam, have fun. I've got a lot of people with very similar helmets on my council. It makes it somewhat confusing. By the way, uh, how would you like to go to... Yeah, Rome. We haven't been to Rome for a while. Go and check out how Rome's doing. So, England is now retreating at this point, and we need to go and wrap up this war. 79% right now. Probably the best thing we can do is... Actually, let's actually just go and see what's... Oh, that's why she had consumption. It's because she wasn't in Constantinople. Drew was sent to Oxford just to keep an eye on what's going on in England. So, yeah, we could go and actually besiege England, but if we do that, then there's a very real risk that potentially our local commanders will catch something. Probably the best thing we should do instead is just head over here and start besieging this local territory. Just start doing some damage to our local rivals in Wessex itself. 
but if the actual plague starts spreading, we need to potentially head further north. We could just go and smash Mercia instead. That would probably be easier if need be. Just watch these two territories very flipping closely. And yeah, this will hopefully get me to 100%, and then I can help myself to Gwent. Very, very nice indeed. <laughs> it's only one tiny county, but it matters to be damn it, because it ought to be part of Wales, or Cornwall as we now call it. And Matt Kernow has died, clutching his heart. Oh, Matt, who is survived by his devil wife, who is ugly, dull, envious, arbitrary, and possessed by Satan, as well as being deceitful. But is very gregarious, so she's fun at parties. Um... <laughs> Oh, Matt. Matt, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, Brimstone is... Brimstone is also incapable, I'm guessing, because of... No. Brimstone's actually suffering from cancer, the poor thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to hear that. Very bad case of being bedridden. So, yeah, we've actually had a couple of uh, bad illnesses floating around, and it feels like this tuberculosis thing is uh, spreading a bit on the aggressive side, actually. Ooh, hang on. Hang the flip on here. Oh... Are you about to? Oh, why are you guys still together? Go away! That's expensive! I'm losing money. Are you about to try and attack Gwent? Because if you are, that's perfect. Well, it's not perfect, then you'll be in defensive position. But what I need to do is just, yeah, get the boats over here. If I just get the boats over here, I won't be attacking over a river. That's the cleverer option here. So, little... Who are you? Oh, yes, you're a person I've been meaning to kick out. So... Ambitious, diligent, deceitful, intricate web weaver. It's a shame you're not bad, but you're going away anyway, bye. Now, this is going to be expensive. I mean, I could just actually do it on foot. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to do it on foot. Screw it. It'll take a while for them to actually get past these troops. So we're just going to loop the long way round and deal with this. And Hector says his favourite toy is missing. This often goes badly wrong. Uh, may gain fussy in either case. And I lose 30 prestige. Uh, happy with that bringing. See if I get lucky. And okay. He is not satisfied because it smells. It stinks. Mad at Guardian. Yeah, that event never seems to go well. No matter what you do under any circumstance. It just seems to end up very, very poorly indeed. So, you guys just loop around the outside here. And then, yeah, I want you to... No, 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 no. Via powers, please. Make sure we go the right bloody way. I'm just looping around to make sure we don't have to cross the river. Uh, and then go round here. In fact, actually, can you go down to... No. Okay, go through this way then. <laughs> Apparently there's no way to go directly here, even though it feels like there really should be. So just loop the long way round, and then once you're done, then you can go and attack these guys, because there'll be no river in the way. Though, annoyingly, the defenders will have an advantage from the hills anyway, but what can you do? Right, round here, and now get in here. And we've also got... Truces are expiring. Ah, yes, of course! So as soon as this war's over, we can get straight over here, and that's just flipping perfect. Uh, so you... And now heading straight over here, we can attack these guys. I know they've got the advantage. It's only about 10-15%, so we should still very, very easily win. Just off the back of, yeah, we've just got the superior numbers and the superior commanders as well. So they are just being shredded. And as you're technically representing England right now, I'm going to work under the assumption that this should push me over to 100%. And also, I'm bent low over my ledger, struggling to stay focused and keep your eyes open. When my wife, Agnes, enters, she crosses the room and inspects the ledgers over your shoulder. Perhaps a fresh pair of eyes might prove helpful. All right. Perhaps you are right. Or you don't think I can handle this on my own. All right. I will get... Yeah, presumably I get proud. Actually, no, it's 30%. How good is proud? Prestige up. It's not exactly spectacular. And she'll like me less. No, I'm just going to say, perhaps you are right, dearest wife. Help me out with that. Meanwhile, pursuit tactics mean we should absolutely destroy these guys, because I'm very good at pursuing. Down they go. And speaking of which, there's more to be done here before that battle's done. So my wife has received an education in stewardship like yourself, so she quickly grasped the nuances of the problems you explain it. The two of you set to work discussing and comparing trade routes. Agnes is the most competent steward. Within the hour, you have laid the groundwork for a promising solution. Well, this has turned out very well, and either we can just immediately go and have sex and fall in love with each other, or we can potentially finish the work with Queen Agnes, in which case we'll like each other more and gain economic technology points. She's 42 right now. You see, I would go and have sex with her, but the chance of her getting pregnant seems low. So instead, let's just keep discussing economics. 
So we like each other more and economic points. Battle of Newport. Complete. And oh dear. But any chance was that my... No, that was an unrelated bishop who just died of severe stress. So that is 100%. We've actually won a war against England, and I would say we've done it pretty darn handily. So, I'm going to enforce my demands and help myself to Gwent. Oh, flipping yes. Lovely. Also, apparently there's a new ambition that only just became available. See the realm prosper. So, I need to be at peace for... Okay, don't do that war just yet. Because I do actually want to go to war, like, momentarily. So we don't want peace just this second, okay? Peace just this second would be bad. Let's just also quickly move these guys back into friendly territory. So we can break them apart without losing any men. Because we're going to be needing those men momentarily down in Brittany. It's very, very good indeed. Though actually, I thought this would actually knock me over to... Wait, what? Oh! Right! That hasn't moved into my personal domain. This guy is... He cannot like me that much, presumably, right? Because he now just reports into me. Right, I was just assuming I was going to take that over and bring it into the personal domain. But instead, I've just... Ah! So if I've got a personal claim, that makes sense. If I've got a personal claim, I get to just personally claim something. But, in the event that I've got a de jure claim, I'm bringing the territory in, but I don't have the personal right to run it, because that's not the sort of claim I've got. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Unfortunately, the kid who's currently running it is eight years old, and is a total lunatic. So, that's not desperately promising. And yeah, I don't think much of him, because he's an Anglo-Saxon foreigner. Well, technically, we should just invade his territory. Though, actually, he invaded our territory first. Well, probably not him, because he's eight. But, you know, someone did. Though, speak of the devil, he's Anglo-Saxon, he's only eight right now. If we were just to assign him a nice guardian, who happened to be of the right culture, that could potentially turn out very nicely for me. Right, insult, how do you feel about running this one? You can handle that, good job. And no. Ah! Now that's very, very interesting. I don't just get the right to do this because he's a vassal, he's not actually in my court. So he needs to like me more before I can actually assign a guardian. And I could just revoke the title, of course. I mean, it would potentially kick off a war immediately. County of Gwent. So revoke the County of Gwent for 50 prestige. This will lower his opinion of me by minus 60 and your other vassals by minus 15. All right. If I do that, do I just get it immediately or does he have the chance to basically say, no, I'm not having that? And peace be with you. I humbly accept your decision to revoke the County of Gwent, though it grieves me deeply. And now we're where we should be. Good. So now I've got Gwent, but he doesn't like me for it. And my other vassals, such as Connor, yeah, revoked vassal titles, minus 15. But he loves me for so many other reasons. He's totally 100% cool. Also, have you had more children yet? Like legitimate ones? Uh, mistake. Oh yeah, you already had Disaster and Margaret, so that's fine. So, little Disaster is... Well, he's a legitimised but Wait, hang on. Have you got one bastard, one legitimised bastard, and you've only managed to get one legitimate child out? Maradud's line must continue. Oh, and flipping perfect timing. There is literally one day until that truce expires. So, guys, I need to disband all of these guys. So, stands down, levies go home, no retinues will be disbanded, no special event troops will be disbanded. Good. That is everyone gone home with the exception of the retinues. And you guys can just go home and guard Devon for me. Well, this, this is all marvellously good news. So, how many troops do I have now? Because I did just actually build a new building as well. Yeah, up to almost 9,000. But, keep in mind, I'm currently over my domain size. So, thing I was having a think about here, right now I've got one vassal over here. But as long as I've only got one vassal in the Kingdom of Wales and one vassal down here in the Kingdom of Brittany, then I still get to basically point at people and declare them the next king because there'll be one vote in Wales and there'll be one vote in Brittany and then there'll be my vote in both of them and I get the deciding vote. So as long as there's only one vassal in each territory, that will actually work out just fine. But I'd rather not do that just this second, because I'd rather actually call up all my troops to take out this territory. So what's the actual negative of just floating over my domain size just for the minute? I'm guessing it's bad. 
So, inefficient taxation, troop recruitment, and resentment among vassals. Okay. And then, yeah, that's presumably... Oh, blimey. So, situation not looking so hot in England with the tuberculosis and all of that. But I'm sure it's under control. It doesn't seem to be spreading right now, which is good. Oh, something else important I should actually check. Just make sure De Ure claims work exactly the same way. So, if I try and push a De Ure claim, yeah, it does play by the usual rules of truces. You do still have a 10-year truce. There's no special rules for that. Which makes sense. Otherwise, you'd always want to basically just be pushing De Ure claim after De Ure claim after De Ure claim. Because, yeah, once you've smashed the enemy army, they wouldn't have time to rebuild. So, don't do that. Don't want to be a truce breaker. Sounds like a bad idea. Leave that be. And also, next time might be a bit more difficult. Because Powys has got, yeah, a river between it and Gwent. But other than that, is quite easy to just approach from any angle. Though, it is hilly. Yeah, terrain mountains. So, defensive bonus there. What about this one? Uh, that is hills. Yeah, defensive bonus there. So, we do still have the defensive bonus thing. But, bearing in mind we'll have to go on the attack. It's not quite as useful as I thought it might be. Still, we're making progress here. Making some good progress. If I could just potentially get hold of, say... Wessex. I'm just keeping uh, a little bit of an eye on Wessex. Just keeping an eye as to whether there's ever any good claimants that might be willing to uh, come to my courts. Because I could certainly, certainly see the advantage of taking over Wessex. Also, I've been on Family Focus for a while, but I've now got old enough I shouldn't be anymore. In fact, I stayed on Family Focus way too long, really. Right. What do I want to do here? What have I not done before? Seduction and intrigue doesn't strike me as spectacular. Hunt seems like a decent one because, yeah, you get health up, which is never a bad thing. And some of the hunting events seem really nice. War is not a terrible idea, potentially, just so I can actually get more troops out. Because with war, I can actually get more troops out of this area down south. And I might be able to win without bothering with actually raising any boats up north. Or I could just send a handful of extra troops. You know, my elite levies from Cornwall and Devon itself. Or instead, as actually, wait. Yeah, here we go. So things like business and rulership, they make your country more prosperous. Now, I know they can also cause things like stress and depression, but that's one of the few things I can most definitely deal with pretty easily because I can just brew potions to take care of that. Yeah, that seems of interest, doesn't it? So, business city vassal up, or... Let's go over to rulership. Let's try and govern well, damn it. Lovely. And also, let's just, uh, have time tick by. And I think we're now allowed to attack this bastard. Lovely. And totally legitimate de jure claim. But, ooh. Hello. That is... Who else is potentially coming aboard? The county of Alto Aragon. And the county of Alto Aragon is currently got... Ooh. It's not even that bad, to be honest, but it is currently being slightly attacked. And in that war, actually, they're, they're winning. Okay, but it feels like their army is probably going to be too busy to show up. But that's probably enough that I want to actually deploy the rest of my forces down there regardless, just for safety. Also, Vassal Levy's raised too long. Okay, I can see how that's true. Yes, but I have split them apart now, though I will probably be calling them up again momentarily. Uh, okay. You, my good man. You bastard. Declare war on you, and yeah, de jure claims. Uh, everyone's willing to vote for that. Say yes. Marvellous. He's got one guy standing over there. I'm guessing that's his one-man retinue. Beautiful. Well done. And raise my troops. How many troops do we have there? Not that many. That's still going to be like... 3,000 odd. Yeah, you guys just basically gather over there and how many troops have you got? You've got 1,000 here and 3,000 there. Right, guys, fall back to Leon, in fact. Uh, the rest of you guys could probably be dismissed. I'm not sure I need, like, all of you. I've got about 3,500 there and another 3,000 here. Yeah, we could probably save them money. You guys can just actually be stood down. You guys can be merged together, and then I just need a handful of boats. So, this should be a nice, simple one. He's not marching yet. My troops are marching north to wait for reinforcements. The boats have already arrived. Bring them together. Bring them to shore. The troops will be arriving momentarily. You guys, I want you to merge. 
board the ships, and then the ships can just basically drop the troops off right there. So by the time these guys have a chance to actually get into my territory, we will have the rest of the army present and correct. Lovely. And then just wait for the final set of reinforcements to arrive. And anytime you're ready, we've also got Priam and Paula the Unfaithful named... Ooh, Berniad. Is that... I swear someone was called Bernard, but maybe that's the original spelling of Bernard that the game's sticking with here. Right, let's have a Luxa here. That's actually your wife, right? Just making absolutely sure that is your wife. Good, marvellous, though we're not 100% sure it's yours. We can never really be sure. But as we're naming your children after famous Trojans, go on then. Well, have Aeneas himself. He can be there. Lovely. Now, all those forces are now present and correct. Sulfur, no, Sulfur doesn't really want to lead who actually does want to lead? Ooh. Iliad himself could, you know. I mean, if Iliad... If Iliad were to die, it would not be the worst thing in the world. Really. I mean, if you think about it, he's 42. Arguably, would now be an excellent time to hand over to Connor and actually let his adventure kick off. Because I would say... It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And, you know, we're not saying we're sending him out to die or anything. He's got plenty of flippin' troops to support him. I'm just purely saying that if he were to die, then potentially we've got a brand new Tanist sitting right here, who's weirdly got a weak claim on Orkney, for reasons. Uh, but he's just, you know, chilling out right here. Life looking good, looking... Very, very strong indeed. Uh, oh, yeah, he's apparently... Oh, he's the court tomcat. A notorious tail chaser who runs circles around jealous husbands and lovers. Dear, oh, dear. A seducer. But he is known as an adulterer, so he's not running circles that effectively. A master builder. A maidservant lover. Intrigue plus one. Plot discovery chance up. That's quite good. And from treasury, he's got some stuff in his... He's got some stuff in his treasure, apparently. He's just got a finger of St. John. Great. He is. He's stressed, though. How would you like me to sort that out for you, by the way? Can I sort that out for you, or no? Because you're not actually in my court, so I assume it's only people actually in my court I can sort that out for. So, that's a shame that you're a bit stressed, but it's not actually the worst thing in the world. Though, yeah, it's a bit embarrassing for his wife, it must be said, that if we look at her children tab, there's only one. If we look at his children tab, there's three. <laughs> that's... That's just slightly awkward, to be honest. Also, it's nice that he still likes me, even though I did technically just leave Croesus down in the dungeons until he died there. So his dad died in the dungeons, but he still seems to love me. In fact, does he actually even care about that? No, he does not care about that in the slightest. So it's good to know that he acknowledges Croesus deserves what he got. Okay, so 6,600 men are marching south. 4,000 men are currently besieging this area with another 600 coming in. However, these guys have been called into the war, but I strongly suspect they're a bit busy to respond. So I do not expect that we will actually be seeing them anytime soon. But it's not impossible we will. And the war begins. Alright, we should do pretty well here. Yeah, looks like on our flanks and our centre, I mean, we're taking some damage. Unquestionably, we're taking some damage. Right now, there's just harass tactics going on on both sides. Uh, shooting each other like crazy. And now, yeah, his flanks are... Well, one flank is uh, almost gone at this point. So, therefore, we've actually got ourselves focused on the centre. Centre should collapse momentarily. And this is all going... Yeah, this is all going perfectly fine for the time being. We've not lost much at all. Final flank collapses... Uh, and sweeping them up from the right to the left. Anytime you're ready to give up, there you go. Job flipping done. So, he's been chased off pretty nicely. And my standing forces can now just basically head directly over here and begin putting this place under siege. I assume he's just called up his troops. Yes, he just called up his troops there. So as a result, this will not be too difficult to actually knock down. I might even be willing to, uh, yeah, do one of the assaults in order to just kind of speed this up. Because this place especially is uh, not very well guarded. So that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Uh, the fort level is five. Okay, fair enough. I think we can still push our way in potentially. Assuming, of course, Iliad's not planning to lead from the front. Also, 
What are you guys doing here? I always forget to disband the fleets. Always forget to disband the fleets. All right, that's that's great, but I need to disband some fleets. Thank you. Yeah, we're uh, we're losing money fast right now, probably because of the bloody domain situation. Also, there's just all right. These fleets are just over here. I'm not sure what you're planning to do next exactly, but fine, what have you. We're ready for an assault at this point. Uh, there's not many of them left. There's really not many of them left at all. Right, uh, begin the first assault, and there we go. Nice, quick, easy victory. But, as she grows older, Helen could use some guidance. Alright, so we've got the option to go for the ambition thing again. And, okay, be thorough, make others count on you. I would gain stressed, but she would gain diligence. That's potentially of interest. How good is she right now? She is uh, playful. Willful and patient. If she were to be patient and diligent. Diligence really good. Am I guaranteed to gain stress? Yes, I am. But I can solve that. So that's probably a bit of a no-brainer. There we go. She is now better. She's already got two actual, yeah, great virtues. So that is good. Diligent and patient. We'll see how she turns out. She could turn out to be... Very much of interest as time goes by, yes. Also, it's been a while since I've passed a law. Are we good for laws at this point? Yes, it looks like we are good for laws. Let's go over to obligations here, because I'm going to have more and more vassals soon. So I should start moving the nobility away from tax shifted towards levy shifted. Because, yeah, people were very clear that was a mistake. Unless, of course, I could move the... No, that's a lot of undecideds over there. What about over here? That is a lot of opponents. Right. Obviously, Connor doesn't like that because that would actually hurt him. So, counter consideration, yeah. Understandable. These guys are not keen on that. Right. Well, that's going to be a problem. In fact, ooh. This council used to be flipping full of yes men. What happened to that? I preferred those days. You know what? In that case, I'm just going to move my mares up to even more taxi. Uh, so, right now, we've got... Yeah, we've got one supporter, me with a deciding vote, and multiple undecideds. Alright, well let's see how they decide to vote on that in that case. And things are going well over here. This territory is already starting to be in very, very bad shape. And yeah, we're already at 39%. As soon as we take over all of this, I would imagine... Oh, hello! Right, so I'm glad I've actually got some spare troops over here. In that case, actually. Oh, and here's something new. So apparently I am hostile towards Queen Uraka IV of Aragon due to a war with their rebelling vassal, Count... Well, he kind of threw his lot in with my war. Like, I never actually declared war on him. He declared war on me. And also, if he's rebelling, why would you care if he gets himself stuck in a foreign war that's going to weaken him? So, you know what? It's fine. I'm sure it's probably not a problem. Right, military, raise the troops that we've not actually raised so far. So all of these guys, together, if you'd be so kind, gather all of them inside Devon. And that should be enough to see off this small force that's decided to come and attack Cornwall directly. So we should be A-OK -okay here. And my courtier Prince Antonio has requested to join... Ah, he wants to go join a holy order, does he? Well, you know what? I don't think that's really a problem. I mean, we brought him over to be my steward, but he hasn't actually been my steward for quite a while. So, honestly, I don't really see the problem here. Yeah, go on then. Go with my blessing. I'll take a hundred piety. Yay, go me. So he's naffed off to go and do that. In all fairness, I didn't really need him around, so that's not a problem. Ooh, did I just inherit a bunch of people from Gwent, by the way? I probably flipping did. How big's my court? Actually, 47. 47 is manageable. So... We've done some good work over there. Just one place is left, and that is the Abbey. So that is going to not take long at all to actually destroy and just wait for all these troops to arrive. And then it is going to be, yeah, 1,800 versus 1,400. Merge them together. Get a few more commanders in play, if you'd be so kind, just to make this a sure thing. And you guys go and attack this force over here while we're finishing off over here. So hopefully that battle combined with this seed should be absolutely fine. And unfortunately, we've just lost a whole bunch of men to an outbreak of... Right, some form of outbreak of disease. We don't know what it is, but hopefully it's not killed Iliad, so everything's fine. 
And once again, Insult wants to go and find yet more flipping things, which honestly I'm totally fine with, because it, you know, seems to basically just be free knowledge. It's pretty easy to do. And we are absolutely slaughtering these guys again. Now, what do we have? Is it the same basic deal where there's, uh, yeah, an expensive option? Ooh. All right. There's actually four options. We can go, ooh, to Alexandria. Except I can't actually afford that, so I probably shouldn't do that, actually. But that would be a thousand knowledge. All right, that's that's quite good. Right, pick through the ruins of the Great Library. That's that's interesting right there. So we're going further afield right now. And a two-thirds chance of a successful search. Or I might fail. Or I could just go to Gwent. Which is still 200, to be honest. But actually, you know what? I don't want to bankrupt myself right now when I'm in the middle of a war. Let's just go for a cheap, reliable option. These guys are almost dead, which is beautiful. So there's a major victory right over there. And then we can just wrap this up. Yeah, screw it. Just, just go assault the walls. And that should be job done. Right. So his allies never actually showed up. Enforce demands. Send that. Hooray for me. I claim this territory. Yay, I'm amazing. And... Wait, that's odd. Now, that was De Yure. But on this occasion, I have gained control of this area immediately. So I'm not quite sure why I did there, but in Gwent I inherited, uh, yeah, a guy who was actually just already standing there. But all right, fine, whatever, I'm sure it's okay. So, let's just break these guys apart, get my retinue to just guard Devon, because then they're just guarding the way into Cornwall, which I know makes no real difference, but it just makes me feel nice to have it laid out like that. You guys march back up to Leon, and we will break you down up there. So, this is the point where things start getting tricky, because now... I need to actually start having vassals. So, that's that's where this could all start falling apart. I need to start playing the vassal game. And by the way, now we're in friendly territory. Break these guys apart. No special events. Yeah, absolutely fine. Everyone returns home. No loss of troops. And I am at, well, right now I'm at 7,600 troops. But that's mainly because, yeah, my actual, uh, my actual personal domain took a bit of a battering there. But... Wasn't a big deal. Wasn't a big deal. It's fine. Though I believe Geoffrey the Liberator is, yeah, he's still around. It's just now he just lives in Anjou. But in Anjou, I can't do anything against him anymore for the simple reason that that's not technically De Ure part of territory I can claim. It is. Hang on, let's go over to De Ure. Yeah, that's part of the Duchy of Anjou, the Kingdom of France, and the Empire of Francia. So as a result of that, I've got no legitimate claim against that. So he's just going to stay there with his troops, which is going to be actually up to like 3,000 because of his ridiculous Marshal 24. But still, that's that's not bad. We'll just leave him be. We can definitely see off a guy with 3,000 strength if he decides to cause trouble for us. So things are okay. Things are okay for the time being. We've made some good acquisitions here, but it is indeed time for us to actually start laying some vassals down here. And that, that worries me. Because now my plan to have one vassal in Brittany and one in Wales isn't going to work anymore. For the very simple reason that I now need to give away two more territories. So at the absolute bare minimum, one of my kingdoms is going to have two voters in it, aside from me. And that means, in theory, they could vote together against my choice. Now, that... That worries me. Worries me slightly. But then again, right now, the situation is, if we just kind of go over to inheritance, there are two votes for, yeah, the actual territory to belong to Connor in Wales. Because Connor has started voting for himself. And I assume that's because he's voting for who I'm voting for. Except, of course, I could just change things over to primogeniture. Now, this is probably not a good idea, because, well, technically it would guarantee that the Empire could never be split by stupid voting. But it would also create the very real possibility that I could end up with a really bad son. And that's not good. That would not be good at all if I got a bad leader. But is it worth it for the security of knowing that the Empire will never be split apart? Not just yet, but it's something I'm going to need to consider in future generations. 
Also, bear in mind, as soon as I start appointing vassals, they start setting up their own bloody succession rules. So, uh, yeah, the county of Gwyneth has actually gone over to flipping Gavelkind for some bloody reason. I hate Gavelkind. Gavelkind's terrible. And the last thing I want is Gavelkind on a big stretch of territory someone else is ruling, because then all of a sudden, bloody vassals go all over the shop to all sorts of inappropriate people. Okay, a little bit of South Wales here. Can't help but notice that these guys uh, do not produce much in the way of a levy. These guys are just not particularly levyish, so... I should probably give that away. The question is, to who? Who ought to be awarded a little bit of South Wales? Because whoever it is, I want them to be of my dynasty, and ideally, nice and obedient, and very likely to, like, just vote with me, and vote for Connor, because a vote for Connor is a vote for the future. That's not that great, I need to come up with a better slogan than that. Ah, but first I need to sort out my own stress before that becomes a problem, and apparently I need to actually go and get some more ingredients, because I don't have enough right now. Right, me and Insult are going to go and grab some ingredients. I'm very good at hunting, so absolutely we're going to go find some prized animal parts. Marvellous. Right, while we're off, I guess we're just like taking someone with us who's going to take notes, because we can sort out the uh, whole vassal situation too. Okay, let's look at some candidates here. Achilleus. He doesn't like me, but... He would be a decent manager, alright? He is slowly coming round to me as time goes by because of love. Oh, that's nice. Uh, but that's going to wear off in time. That's gonna, actually, it's going to take 20 years to wear off, so that's fine. Plus, if I actually, like, give him a bit of territory, then he'll probably like me more. But he's not spectacular in his attributes. So I want someone who's really spectacular in their attributes... Because whoever it is, I'm going to want them to be on the council, rather they're going to insist on being on the council. So there has to actually be... Wait, what the... Orange! Orange is... Oh no, she's not back. I'm just looking at people who are in my dynasty. Uh, yeah, she never actually left my dynasty. She is currently the spy master of Bedford. So, good for her. It's nice that she's found good work over there. Even though that's not really what she's good at, but whatever. I mean, I could go for Sulphur, but he doesn't like me that much. But he is good enough to basically just be Marshall going forward. He's young. He's alright. Yeah, okay. That could potentially work. I mean, alternatively, there's Hellfire. Hellfire's actually pretty decent as well. Either Sulphur or Hellfire are both decent individuals. Though Hellfire has gone completely flipping mad, which is probably not the best thing in the world. Or the Strong Lass. Good old strong lass, who's just basically chilling out in Cornwall, being married to some other guy from the dynasty, not doing much at this exact moment in time. Strong lass could potentially be assigned territory, and then go on to actually be my steward, because that's 15, that's not that bad at all, really. Also, Luna's back, don't forget Luna's back, ah, but Luna is dying of cancer, and doesn't like me very much, and honestly, I can't exactly blame her, after what actually uh, went on there. Ooh, Priam, though. Priam, currently the spy master. Is landing your spy master a bad idea? Possibly, but if I just keep him sweet. Yeah. Okay. I could see the advantage of that, though he is deceitful. But then that's what makes him so good at intrigue, so. Oh. Ambitious, deceitful, high intrigue. No, I think we should probably keep you away from your own private army, actually. You know what? I know he's not the best person in the world, but. The game is flagging that I have unlanded sons, and that's supposed to be a bit of a problem. So as a result, I'm going to actually give him a spot of land. Alright, Achilles of Cornwall can have a bit of land. This'll do. Down over here. So, Kurnev. Kurnev appears to actually produce relatively little in the way of troops or money. It is poor, and it is uninteresting. And there we go. He can have Kurnev off he pops. So he's going to go and take care of that. That now is 10 out of 9. That's absolutely fine. We'll see who he chooses to vote for. We'll see if he actually uh, agrees with my vote. Because uh, he still doesn't like me. But I'm hoping he'll come to like me over time. Especially as, yeah, sooner or later Iliad's going to die. And he won't be rivals with the next king. But he'll still be ambitious. I'm not sure if it's a mistake to have put an ambitious person to actually have a little bit of land. But... He can only do so much harm with flipping Kurnev, alright? He can't do that much. Now, 
back to South Wales, because uh, this I consider part of the core of the Empire. So this has to go to someone I can definitely trust. You know, I do just keep coming back to Priam, even though he is ambitious, proud, and deceitful. And he's got high intrigue. But he does like me. He does like me. You know what, screw it, you get it, you get that, right. Have yourself a landed title, alright? You're a good kid, you've done good work for me. Oh, but what about the Hellfire children? Just give one more look to the Hellfire children. Because there's Hellfire and there's Sulphur. Ah, rather annoyingly, Hellfire got married to a flipping genius, but then went completely start raving mad and hasn't managed to produce a single child so far. So that is... Uh, that's no good at all. And Sulphur is 29 not who married. You know what, Priam? It's yours. Alright? Have fun. You and your completely unfaithful wife have fun in South Wales. Alright? There you go. Have the county. Off you pop. And that is me down to the required 9 out of 9. And I suppose as I've only got one ambition left, I should go for Realm Prospering. Five years of peace. It's the only objective I can actually go for here. And also, yeah, titles I can create, absolutely flipping fine. Yeah, I think we're okay. Right, now what has that done? I'm just going to move the month over to the next month. What has that actually done to my ability to raise troops? Because I'm going to guess it's potentially caused problems. Yeah, my army levies are now down to... Well, actually, my domain can still raise... Uh, 8,000 odd. It's just that I'm going to take some time to actually retrain them because, you know, I have just fought two wars in a row. However, I do now have an additional 600 troops from my vassals. Oh, and I'm going to guess that some of you guys are going to want to be on the council, like flipping now. And I suppose that is fair. Wait, what? Oh, we've got a law change currently underway. Right. Would you mind, like, finishing up that vote, please? Because how long ago have we done that? Yeah, three, three, two, and two. So if just one more person would like to vote for me, that would be absolutely marvellous. Who hasn't bloody voted yet? Right. Anytime you're ready. Also, this guy wants to... He wants to become exalted among men. That's not a very bishopy sort of thing. And also, we have managed to gather some... No, we haven't actually yet. We've set out to find some animal parts. But I'm such a good hunter. This cannot be a problem. So, three votes for, three against, but then doesn't that not matter anymore? Because even if, no, is that three including, yes, yeah, six people and me, so who's the undecided person? Alright, whoever it is, they better flipping vote for me, and they, they rejected it. Right, what a bunch of bastards. Well, that's a shame, because it's time for us to make some bloody changes. So right now, only Dunban is actually voting with me. Well... That's just not cool, guys. That's just not cool. So, Priam was already on the council, so that's fine. And Connor was already on the council, that's fine. So, Achilleus, you are going to want to be on the council. I understand. I'm going to get you on this council. Don't you worry. However, you'd be best off as a marshal or a steward. Honestly, you wouldn't be the best marshal, but... Sometimes we have to, yeah, that's a shame. But no offence, the marshal seems to do uh, relatively little. Relatively not so much. So even though Achilles is not the best person, he'd be, he'd be a bloody malcontent. Great. Great. I'm so glad he'd be a malcontent. Also, just get on with training the troops, please, because we could do with some more troops trained as quick as you bloody well, please. And here's something interesting. So Paul Irving right now is... What's your position? Your position is... Chancellor, 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 Chancellor. Ah, Paul. He's a pragmatist. I could replace him with someone who is just as good at his job, who's this, yeah, this Italian kid, who is actually, yeah, going to be a loyalist. So, welcome to the... Oh, it's all changed on the council right now. So, that has put the council over to me and two loyalists. Achilles, who's a malcontent because he's my rival, so he's just going to never cooperate, to be honest. Spymaster is a glory hound, as is Connor. Can't do much about that. If I could just basically replace the chaplain with someone who's going to be on board. But sadly, nobody would. And all of these people want to be flipping counsellors. Well, that's, that's great, but none of you are actually good enough. I already have the best person for the job. 
Fine. So I've got a bunch of glory hounds on the council, and I haven't quite managed to stack it in my favour, because Achilles is going to to cause trouble. I should have ignored that alert at the top and said, oh, you've got an unlanded son, you're going to want to land him. No! No, that was pointless, I shouldn't have done that. Oh well, never mind. Also, my court is getting smaller as people have naffed off to their own court, so that's good. Right, so this decentralisation has some advantages, but at least my court is a little bit on the neat and tidy side. And also the money is coming back in again. Nice, plus 24. Fine, we should probably pay off that loan as a fairly high priority. And then, ah! Well, this is very interesting, isn't it? Yes, that territory down there has actually just taken over a bit of Moo Moo. So this petty kingdom, this petty kingdom. Ah, sadly, I can't actually find anyone who's got a good claim on that who wants to move into my territory. I should probably just send my chancellor over there. I could do with a claim over there. Get down in the south and also... Let's just quickly check in on Scotland. How's Scotland getting on right now? Scotland is at war with... Right. Another bloody war with Norway. Right, but... Ooh. He's winning it. Oh, well done. And also hostile towards this guy. Oh. Of course. Norway's... Oh, Norway's really on fire right now. Yes, Norway had that civil war going on. How's that going for you, by the way? 45% in favour of the king when he did have more troops, yes. But I'm guessing the troops, therefore, too busy to actually come over here and deal with Scotland. But if he does come over there, he can probably just, like, kill Scotland. Yeah, you've definitely got more men than Scotland. That's certainly true. But King Colin, you're doing all right. Well done. Oh, and better and better news... Two more sons have appeared. And guess whose house they technically belong to? Yeah, it's mine. Though, admittedly, one of them has the great pox. The other one doesn't, though. He's managed to produce at least one not dying son, so that's marvellously good news. Ah, and in news I probably shouldn't be desperately surprised by, Connor is happy to join in the vote for himself as next king. However, Priam has decided to vote for his own five-year-old child which feels like not the right person to vote for. Meanwhile, Achilles decided to... He's just decided to vote for himself. Achilles is just voting for himself for next king of Brittany. So, I guess I shouldn't be desperately surprised. He is ambitious and all of that. Right, deploy the council. Fabricate claims over here. You just get on with that. Is everyone else already doing a job that they ought to be doing? You can... Actually, we haven't really done administering the realm. Let's just basically send you over there and... Oh, okay. Improves your... Ah! Improves your entire domain rather than in a particular place. Increases cultural conversion chance and prosperity gain. Okay, we'll just see if that has a positive impact across the territory I directly control. Sure, I'll see what that does. Ah, and young Prince Hector is ready for an education focus. So, 12 years old, 44404. Has Curious though. Curious is good. And what have we got here? Ah, slightly clashing, unfortunately. Right, we'll give you a martial education in that case. And yeah, I will actually manage him myself because he is my son. So we'll see how that all works out. Now, 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 now. Achilles, wait. Oh, I forgot to get him married. Except apparently I can still arrange the marriage. Uh, right. I thought he wouldn't allow me to do that anymore, but also, everybody just stop, stop it. I'm guessing the flipping Holy Roman Emperor just died. Right, stop time for a second. Who do we want to get you married to? Because you are now a Count, and potentially a Tanist. He said this is actually a little bit odd, because if I actually tried to arrange the marriage for him, then all of the non-aggression pacts just read, yeah, non-aggression pact with uh, Prince Achilles of Cornwall. As I am aware, because that's who I'm trying to get married. Ah, wait, I think I know what this means. If it just says Prince Achilles of Cornwall, that just means she personally just has non-aggression pact, i.e. the spouse of one. If there is going to be a proper non-aggression pact, it will say underneath it. Gotcha. You know what, let's not worry about it too much. Let's just get him someone who can produce some good children. So this person over here, yeah, Norwegian. She's got Midas Touch, Honest, Ambitious and Kind. Good selection. She wants to get married. So we'll just move her over there. No need for it to be matrilineal, of course. Technically, Achilles will lose some prestige, but whatever. It gets him a good wife who's got high fertility. 
hopefully they can get on with producing some children. Lovely. Ah, yes, of course. And we went to Gwent to actually get some scrolls a while ago while simultaneously going hunting for ingredients, I think. And uh, yes, I was wondering if that might be about to happen. Knowledge is past a thousand. Uh, I can flipping level up at this point. So I'd say... Let's just actually apply for that. Bear in mind, it will just take a minute to come true. And I will get up to the next level, which is also a free bonus learning, which helps with my technology inside the whole of society. So that's marvellous. Plus, we've also got a successful hunt for new ingredients. I've picked up some antlers, gallbladders, hearts, and eyeballs. And I have been granted the next rank. Oh, yeah. Learning plus two. And I think I've got enough knowledge left over to sort out my own, yeah, to sort out my own little uh, depression. Because I've actually got some depression I need to sort out. I need to get rid of stressed. And what do I want to put in? Some heart. Combine the two. Throw it all in there. I'd say heart. Dried heart. That seems like a good sort of thing. And in addition, we've just gained a new power. Make a horoscope for my children. Now, I don't know what that does, but that sounds kind of cool. And we've also got a new Pope. Right, so Pope Nicholas III is gone. Pope Johannes the 19th is now the new Pope. Is he? Ooh, look at all his virtues. la -di da Though he is drunk and stressed, but he does have some good Popey virtues. Right there, I'll agree, that's Popey. And we get rid of stressed. Great. And arguably slightly more worryingly, yeah... So, as it turns out, Achilles has just gone straight over to... Hey, there ought to be primogeniture succession in Brittany. No. No, there shouldn't. There definitely shouldn't, because presumably... Oh, wait, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. If I were to declare O-Flip... If I were to declare primogeniture succession, then... I'd need to declare it for all of the kingdoms at the time when they've all got the same king. Because if I put primogeniture in one place, but I didn't put it... Oh, wow. Okay. Because primogeniture is per kingdom, just like... Yes, all succession laws are at a kingdom level. So, even if I put them on primogeniture, then there's... Okay. I need to, in the event that any part of my kingdom is desperate to go primogeniture, then that means everything has to go primogeniture. And obviously, Achilles wants primogeniture, and then I'd basically have no choice but to flip Wales over to primogeniture, and then Achilles would be the next king. And we don't want that. We want Connor to be the next king, just because he's, like, better. Admittedly, he's, he's a bit of a rake, it must be said, but... In fact, let's just quickly check in on him. How many more children have you had? No, still just the three. Get on with it. You're supposed to be like the court tomcat, but just like, at least spend like two minutes with your wife, please. Also, here's something interesting. So, apparently, um, hello. Who exactly are you? And why are you planning to kill someone inside my territory? Because you want to kill, hang on, who exactly is... Who exactly is this? And why have I got them thrown in prison? Right, well, whoever this guy is, I threw them in... Why are you in prison? And why has basically everyone in my entire dynasty decided to join in with the plot to... To kill you? Because, yeah, that's... That's enough for you to die pretty quickly. Right, okay. Probably what we should do is, um, just get rid of this guy. So he's presumably... Yeah, there he is. He's been in there for... For two years, and Patton's been there for five. I'm assuming you committed a plot at some point. I could just banish you. You've got no money on you. So, okay, you can just go away at this point. You just naff off, and the other people can just kill you if that's what they want to do. As for you, a former mayor, yes, you plotted against me. I could get rid of you for 25 gold. Do you have any claims or anything? No, I'm just going to get rid of you. Right, you're banished. 25 gold. Oh, hang on. No, you're being ransomed. Hmm. How dangerous are you? Possibly somewhat dangerous. Yeah, you know what? I'll take the 25 gold, and I assume you can just get back to work at this point. So have fun being mayor again. Please don't plot against me, or I will just put you in the oubliette this time. And oh no! 
Is the devil woman finally dead? Yeah, died a natural death, age 50, but has produced three surprisingly excellent quality children in Brimstone, Hellfire and Sulphur, even though Brimstone is currently bedridden and suffering from cancer. Oh, poor Brimstone. One of your, um, yeah, one of your brothers needs a wife, doesn't he? Yes, Sulphur. Sulphur's not exactly important. We just need to find him a decent wife somewhere in the world. And yeah, he won't come with a non-aggression pact because he's not close related enough to, uh, to our king. So in which case, I guess we just find you someone who is, yeah, nice and fertile and comes with some good traits if we can find one. Or some claims, of course. We could find some good claims. That wouldn't be bad at all. You come with a, hmm, a weak inheritable claim on Denmark. That wouldn't be terrible, you know. That wouldn't be terrible at all. Sure, it doesn't get me non-aggression pack with Denmark, but it does give me the option to maybe make Denmark mine at some point. Alright, you know what? I think we'll just take that, actually. Yes. Oh, but here's something that could be very much of interest. Is that the Holy Roman Emperor that's just sent me a message? It is. It is the Holy Roman Emperor that sent me a message. Alright. Who exactly... Are you my good man? Okay, you're you're pretty good. All right, I like you. High Marshal, High Diplomacy, wants to make your realm prosper. And yeah, wants to just basically stay at peace. Not very intriguing, so unlikely to try and murder me. Aged 66. All right, now who exactly are you planning to marry off? That's Andromache, yeah, that's Andromache right there. So she's 15 right now, and she's actually been through a couple of betrothals just because she's been a bit unlucky. She's a bit of a black widow. Children she's betrothed to just keep dying. Who is this guy? Exactly, because that's not one of your children. Actually, it wouldn't matter if he actually was, because you have got elective. Wow, they've got agnatic elective set up. Interesting. So... Who actually is next in your succession queue? Presumably not this guy. Uh, who are you exactly? You are the child of Prince Eberhard, but is Prince Eberhard... Yes. Okay. This is... Uh, this is potentially of interest right there, then. So this is the grandson of the Holy Roman Emperor himself. All right. Now, is that closely related enough if I were to throw... Well, actually, it should be. But it doesn't actually say whether I get a non-aggression pact. If it doesn't say it there, I'm assuming... I'm assuming it doesn't count. So, let's just actually put this into into my terms. Just to see what we've got here. And select spouse. Okay. Uh, no, a range of betrothal, sorry. A range of betrothal. If I throw Andromache at you, that gets me non-aggression with... It is. It's good enough. But it won't last for long. Because he's on his way out. And the new guy is going to potentially be... Not that... The new guy is going to be... Oh. Well. Well, well, well. That's the father of this kid. Well, this is... This is fascinating. So, presumably... That would survive his death. Because after... Yeah, after he dies... Ah, but then it only survives Iliad. Iliad might be the limiting factor. He dies. His son becomes the next Holy Roman Emperor. Because that's who everyone's voting for under the elective system right now. Fine. Great. Problem, however. Once Iliad dies, Andromache's not closely enough related to the next king, I don't think, for it to stand. But... You know what? It seems like a good idea to me. That seems like an excellent idea. So... Yeah, agree to that, and so hopefully everyone should say, yes, this sounds like a marvellous idea in a second. Uh, do I already have that non-aggression pact right now? Yep, there's that non-aggression pact between me and him. Right, so by any chance, would you be interested in a bit of an alliance? Bit of an alliance. <gasps> an alliance with the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, 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 how many troops is that? Weirdly, not that many, actually. In fact, that's that's really weird. But then I suppose, yeah, vassals don't provide you with much. So after you've uh, maxed out... Ah, it's because your domain isn't that high. So yeah, the actual amount of troops you can command isn't that high at all. 
What sort of wars do you guys get involved with? So I'm kind of suspicious this might actually lead to more trouble than it's worth. You've had a brief war with one of your own who just basically was, yeah, a bit of a breakaway state, I'm going to assume. Also, there is a giant Christian defense pact against this guy. And also a smaller Muslim defense pact. But I'm concerned by the defense pact. Because that's a lot of people that might end up going to war with you, potentially. Ooh, especially as, yeah, Denmark's in there. That's Denmark at the top, then Venice, Croatia, Barcelona, hmm. That's, that's a little bit concerning right there, that defensive pact. Because, well, it's a defensive pact. So it can only attack if they attack him. And France doesn't seem to be involved. Hmm. Interesting. And England definitely isn't involved. So... Yo, screw it. Screw it. Alright, I'm throwing my lot in. We're doing it. We're just gonna do it. I'm not sure whether this is a good idea or not, but... It's not forever. Yay! Come on, come on, come on. Say yes, 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 say yes. Anytime you're ready, you stupid bastard. And we are going to be, momentarily, oh yes, I'm now allied with the Holy Roman Empire. Which I'd say is the biggest empire in the world, but I don't think it is. I think actually the Byzantines are doing really nicely. They've actually expanded. Like, every time I look over here, they've taken a bit more territory over in this part of the world. They're doing very well for themselves. Even if they are currently being led by Greg the Monster. Which is, uh, mildly concerning, yes. He's not even at war with anyone right now. He's just got a couple of truces going on. Yeah, bit of internal problems, but for the most part, he's got himself, ouch, 28,000 troops. And he's invaded Italy, and he's managed to hold that for decades at this point. Right. You know, ladies and gentlemen, let's leave things off there. We have just made, uh, well, I don't know. This could be a very good move, or it could be a very, very bad move. But I'll say one thing. That comes with a lot of troops, all right? If the Holy Roman Empire decides to actually back their word and agree to come to my aid and isn't willing to sacrifice a whole bunch of prestige, then potentially we've just picked up the firepower to start taking some big, big chunks out of England. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. We might have to start having a think about that next time, ladies and gentlemen, as well as looking at Ireland, as well, of course, as keeping an eye on Scotland and keeping an eye on France. Because we are starting to build up an interesting network of friends here. Cornwall has got powerful friends. The question is, what are we going to do with them? And is this all going to horribly backfire because I make too many relationships with too many people simultaneously and in the end one of them ends up in a war with the other and the whole thing falls apart? That last one, that last one is quite feasible. So, we will see if that happens next time, ladies and gentlemen. In the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd and this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much and goodbye. I've created a small problem in my road system, which is uh, it's literally impossible for anyone to ever go back into town. And this building shall be where we produce our zebras. And this much taller building next door is naturally where we produce the giraffes. Does anyone remember how the road system went? I think it was something like this.